Ponce. Hello. Happy Louis Riel Day. My name is Melanie Walsh, and I am a storyteller with McMurray Métis Local 1935. We are one of the largest Indigenous groups within the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo. It makes us so happy that all of you are participating in this virtual presentation today, especially during Métis Week, and of course on November 16th, Louis Riel Day. The reason why we celebrate Louis Riel on this day is because it was one of the darkest days in our history. The day our fearless leader, our superhero, was hung. The Oxford Dictionary defines a hero as a person who is admired or idealized for their courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. Louis Riel led many battles and fought to preserve the rights for the Métis people. After the Battle of Batoche, which was fought between the Canadian encroachment, between the Canadian government and the Métis with their First Nations allies, Louis Riel was hung for treason and his participation in the resistance to Canadian encroachment on Métis lands on November 16, 1885 at the Northwest Mountain Police Barracks in Regina. Today is a day of commemoration, of remembrance of the many unsung heroes of the Métis Nation. Many leaders rose to sought to defend our identity and existence. There were and are many great leaders of the Métis, some you will hear from today. Joining us first is McMurray Métis President and Vice President, Peter Hansen and Kelly Myers. Hello, good morning students. I'm Peter Hansen, President of McMurray Métis Local. And I'm Kelly Myers, Vice President of the McMurray Métis Local. We are honored to be celebrating Louis Riel Day with you during this Métis Week. Louis Riel was a hero of the Métis Nation fighting for our rights to be recognized as Indigenous people, people who helped shape this country. This year, we want to share an important shape with you. The infinity symbol, as seen on the Métis flag and on your pins and your bookmarks. The infinity symbol represents the joining of two cultures, First Nations and European, and it represents the immortality of the nation. Immortal meaning that our culture will always be around forever and for infinity. The infinity symbol can be seen on both of the Métis flags, which was the first flag created in Canada before we were ever a country. The red flag was the colors of the Hudson Bay Company and was the first to be flown. The blue flag was the colors of the Northwest Company and was flown before the Battle of Seven Oaks in 1816. Louis Riel fought many battles and you will learn more about them today. The reason why he fought them and why we consider him as a hero for the Métis people is because he ensured we were being recognized. He defended Métis people who are as Indigenous people and fought to preserve our distinct culture. And although these battles were won and we are seen as a strong Métis nation today with local, provincial and national leaders who you will hear from later on, we are still fighting to keep our rights in many areas from government to more traditional ways of life such as hunting, trapping and harvesting. The main thing Louis Riel fought for and we continue to fight for is recognition. That is why it's going to be so awesome for Métis people to see all you young students use your McMurray Métis stickers and rock your Louis Riel tattoos and wear your Métis flag pins. We are so proud to say that McMurray Métis has over 800 members and we're continuing to grow and we know that there are many, many, many more Métis people living in the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about our culture today and honoring our hero, Louis Riel. We hope you enjoy the presentation and get a better understanding of our hero and can help teach others about him and about the Métis people. Thank, Thank you. you. Just like me, both Peter and Kelly are proud to be Métis. 
and we were all born and raised right here in Fort McMurray. We all come from a long line of Métis people that call the RMWB home. Our grandparents and ancestors lived and worked in this region from Fort Chippewan to Waterways. Many of our ancestors were trappers and fur traders, hunters and fishermen, working on the rivers, hauling barges and freight up the Athabasca River. You know who else was Métis? William McMurray, who Fort McMurray was named after. He was the chief factor of the Hudson Bay Company during the height of the fur trade. He was born in Northwest Manitoba to John McMurray and Jane Cardinal, and later posted in the Athabasca region to oversee trading. Fort McMurray is deeply rooted in Métis culture, and it really is so exciting that today, we have 24 schools, 74 classrooms, and 2,000 students learning more about our history. Louis David Riel was born in the Red River settlement of modern-day Winnipeg, Manitoba on October 22, 1844. His father was Louis Riel Sr. and his mother was Julie Lajdemir. Now you will learn more about Louis and Métis history from Madeline Height. Her family is also from Manitoba, but you will learn more about that later. So get out your fruit snacks and enjoy this. Okay, so I knew next to nothing about the Métis up until a few years ago, but that's because nobody told me I was Métis, and we never really learned about them in school, which is a tragedy because there's a lot of cool history there. I'm Madeline Height, and I'm here to take you on a journey through the Métis history. So, who are the Métis? Well, they're one of the three indigenous groups native to Canada and were often called mudbloods. I mean half-breeds, and they were called half-breeds because they're the children of the Euro settlers and the First Nations. And with that, let's hop into the timeline. The 1600s. European settlers are in Canada and basically pulled off the biggest finders keepers in history, even though somebody already lived there. Uh, they helped start the fur trade, the Hudson's Bay Company, yes, that Hudson's Bay Company, but way, way older, became the leading source of the furs during the fur trade. The fur trade is booming across the sea. And I was about to say something a little risque, so I'm here to reword it. Some First Nations and Euro settlers had romantic relationships, while others weren't consensual. First Nation and Euro settler babies started popping up all over the place, and they started to call themselves the Métis. The Métis started marrying other Métis, further strengthening the bonds of who they are. Back to you, Maddie. So now that you know how the Métis were made, in a sense, let's talk about where they lived. Most notably, the Métis lived along the Red River and the Assiniboine River in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. The Hudson's Bay Company gives Thomas Douglas, a.k.a. Lord Selkirk, a Scottish man, a whole lot of land along the Red River and the Assiniboine River to bring in Scottish settlers. The Métis, who already lived there, weren't too happy about this as they were in fear of losing their land and the ability to trade furs. The Métis and the Northwest Company, a competitor to the Hudson's Bay Company, join forces to combat the Hudson's Bay and Lord Selkirk in the Battle of Seven Oaks. It lasted only 15 minutes and involved less than 80 men. The Métis ran as many Selkirk settlers out of town as possible, but some returned and increased the number of Scottish Métis. The blue infinity Métis flag is flown throughout the Battle of Seven Oaks. It is the oldest patriotic flag to have ever been created in Canada. The infinity symbol on the Métis flag represents the immortality of the nation and the infinite river the Métis call home. There is a red version of the flag, and there's been some debate on why that is. The most prominent one being that the red one represents the Hudson's Bay Company, while the blue one represents the Northwest Company. 1821. The Northwest Company merges with the Hudson's Bay Company, resulting in an increased number of Métis families in the Red River settlement. In 1831, the first residential school was established. Horrible. But in 1844, Louis Riel is born, and he will go on to be what many consider the father of Manitoba. The 1850s. 
There was a two-day battle between the Métis and the Dakota at the Grand Coteau over hunting bison, in which the Métis won and ensured the two indigenous groups shared the bison stock. <laughs> Happy birthday, Canada! You were born on July 1st, 1867, and this is what you look like. So you're looking at this map of Canada and you're wondering why does it look so weird and what the heck is a Rupert's Land? Well, Rupert's Land is what many consider to be the homeland of the Métis and as of 1867, it's owned lock, stock and barrel by the Hudson's Bay Company. Until... This is where the whole Louis Riel thing happens, so we're going to go through it quickly and briefly. It honestly deserves a whole video to itself, so if you want to know more information on Louis Riel and the Métis, you can check out our website below. The Hudson's Bay Company sold Rupert's land to Canada, and Canada wanted to check out its awesome new land, so they sent a not-so-cool land surveyor named William McDougall to check it out. Louis Riel warned the Métis about McDougall coming, and a game of cat and mouse broke out between the Métis and Canada. The Métis started their own mini-government, and some not-so-peaceful negotiations happened between Canada and the Métis. The end results of these negotiations was the birth of Manitoba through the Manitoba Act. 1870, the Reign of Terror begins, and the Ontario Militia brutalized the Métis community. <laughs> Way to go, Ontario. Louis Riel, afraid for his life, flees to the States and hoped that it would ease the tension. Canada put a $5,000 bounty on Riel's head, which would be about $100,000 nowadays. So, a lot more stuff happened, and we're just going to jump right into the Battle of Patash. It's getting heated, and Louis Riel is asked to come out of his second exile to support the Métis. He is captured and put on trial and found guilty of high treason. The jury decided that the death penalty was not needed, but the judge overthrew this decision and at the age of 41 years old, Louis Riel is hung in Regina, Saskatchewan. After the fall of Louis Riel, many Métis lost their homes and it led to many of them moving south to Montana or North Dakota. Some even went west to the Peace River District, which is now known as Alberta, my home province. Canada started handing out a coupon of sorts called Scrip. It was supposed to be traded in for land or money, but the system was fraudulent in nature and they were given next to nothing. And most of what they were given was poor for the Métis way of life. September 1st, 1905. <coughs> Happy birthday, Alberta and Saskatchewan. You are now provinces. The Métis people of Alberta try and seek justice for the fraudulent script system. Their target, a not so cool dude named Richard Secord an Alberta land speculator. Land that was supposed to go to the Métis under the script system didn't, so they took it to court. But Alberta passed a motion that script fraud wasn't their issue to deal with, so the Métis were left with no options. A drought hits Western Canada. The Canadian government comes up with a Prairie Farm Rehabilitation Act, except in doing so, forced even more Métis people to relocate, because Crown land isn't for living on, but we can farm on it now. Uh, a notable example of this is St. Menelay. The Métis Association of Alberta began to lobby the Alberta government into setting aside land for the Métis. They came up with 12 settlements, four of which weren't even suitable for farming. The Saskatchewan government buys a Métis farm and they establish more across the province. The Métis people were sent to these farms to rehabilitate them. Some even witnessed their houses being burned down as they boarded the train. These farms were later abandoned in favor of jobs that actually paid money. The groovy new town of Fort McMurray in North Ward Developments evicted the Métis people of the non-official Métis settlement known as Moxon Flats because they wanted to build housing complexes and a marina, which was never built in the end. The Métis are finally recognized as one of Canada's three Indigenous people via Section 35, Subsection 2 of the Constitution Act. The Métis National Council is established to represent the rights and interests of the Métis people on a national level. 
For 165 years, residential schools removed Métis children from their parents by force and tried to assimilate them and erase their culture. Finally, and I can't believe I have to say it took 165 years, the last residential school closed its doors forever in 1996. And we are at the end of the timeline. Not much more has happened. There's been a few apologies here and there, and the Métis are making progress on their hunting and gathering rights. But one of the more notable things that have happened is the Métis nations of Alberta have signed self-governing with the Government of Canada. Some cool things are happening in Fort McMurray as well. Their Métis local has recently purchased some land that used to be Moccasin Flats. They're planning on building a cultural center that will be open to the public. And with that, we're done. 300 years of history that hardly anyone knew. Like I said earlier, if you want to know more, we went more in depth on our website, link in the description below. And with that, I leave you with some questions. What's your history? Do you want us to cover it? Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. Oh, hey, Maddie now works with me. Right here at McMurray Me Tea. She's the audiovisual specialist and even designed the Made Tea Week pins. We love collecting pins as they help secure our Made Tea sashes. It is going to be so cool for Maddie and I to see all of you wearing your pins. I'm sure Audrey Portra, the president of the Made Tea Nation of Alberta, would like to see it too. You see, government is really another important aspect to the Made Tea. Louriel dedicated his life to ensure Made Tea people were treated fairly by the Canadian government. We are still working to uphold our rights as Indigenous people. At the local level, we have Peter and Kelly and five other local board members. Then we have our Region 1 President, Jimmy Cardinal. Next is Audrey Portra, the President of the Métis Nation of Alberta. And then there is actually the President of the Métis Council of Canada. And next we're going to hear from Audrey and then the newly elected President of the Métis Council of Canada. Hello, students and teachers. I'm Audrey Patra, the president of the Métis Nation of Alberta. I'm here today to wish you all a happy Louis Riel Day and very happy Métis Week. Thank you for joining Métis people across the country as we commemorate Louis Riel and all his heroic efforts done in the past so Métis people can be here today. Riel fought for the Indigenous rights of the Métis people and so that their distinct culture would be recognized. We honour his death because he dedicated his life to saving the future for all Métis people in Canada and the nation. He represents, fought, and died for. The people that were here long before Canada was even a country and Alberta was even a province. We are here today, 136 years later, and still fighting the battle to preserve our traditional knowledge, ways of life, history, and distinct culture. Yet, we are now stronger. After 90 years of battle, the Métis Nation of Alberta signed the first ever Métis Recognition and Self-Government Agreement with the Canadian government. This is recognition that we, as the Métis Nation within Alberta, has the right to self-determination and self-governing of Métis people, which will continue the legacy of Louis Riel. After all the hardships and battles Louis Riel has faced, our ancestors have faced, and our grandparents have faced. One of the most important things the Métis want is the recognition they deserve as the founders of this country, as Indigenous peoples of Canada, and as a form of government. We will forever be inspired by our hero, Louis Riel, and hope you all are too. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about our Métis culture and join us in celebrating Métis Week. Thank you. As you can hear from President Portra, Louis Riel and his legacy will live on. We have been deeply inspired by him. He wore his heart and love for his Métis culture right on his sleeve. We can today too. Hope you all like your Louis Riel temporary tattoos. How cool! Let's learn how cool Louis Riel really was. Before we get into the history of Louis Riel and the creation of Manitoba, let's start with some backstory on Riel. 
He was born October 22, 1844 and was the oldest of 11 children. He grew up in the settlement known as Red River, the precursor to what is now known as Winnipeg. Riel found himself taking after his father to study to become a priest in Montreal. After his father's death, Riel dropped out of college but stuck around Montreal. Now that you know a little bit about Riel, let's get into the formation of Manitoba, also known as the Red River Rebellion. Louis Riel came back to the Red River settlement just in time to stop a land survey led by one William McDougall. A Métis National Council was formed by John Bruce to gather the voices and concerns of the Métis. Discussion began between Canada and the National Council. The Métis were worried they would be pushed off their land, so Riel led an uprising and seized control of Upper Fort Garry. With this, the Hudson's Bay Governor, McTavish, ordered the Métis to lay down their arms, so Riel proposed a provisional government. Ownership of Rupert's land transferred from the Hudson's Bay Company to Canada. The provisional government is formed with John Bruce as its president, later replaced by Louis Riel himself after Bruce fell ill. Negotiations began between Canada and the Métis provisional government. The Métis came up with a list of rights to negotiate a formal annexation. While this was happening, Riel's guardsmen arrested 48 armed men calling themselves Canadians. Thomas Scott was among those 48 arrested. He was described as crude and attempted escape multiple times. Thomas Scott was executed by the provisional government. After some back and forth between the Métis and Canada, the Manitoba Act is passed and receives royal assent. Manitoba is now a province. Shortly after the Act is passed, the Wolseley Expedition comes to confront Riel for executing Thomas Scott. Louis Riel flees south and settles across the border. Riel didn't stay in the States for long, this time, and quietly returned home. There was an attempted raid by the Fenian from the U.S. border, and Riel gathered a Métis cavalry to prove his commitment to keep peace with Canada. There were mixed feelings surrounding Riel in Ontario. He was widely known as a murderer and a $5,000 bounty was put on his head. But in Quebec and Manitoba, he was a hero defending the Métis, French culture and the Catholic faith. Because of this, Riel was elected into the House of Commons on three different occasions. The federal government approved a motion that Louis Riel was to be banished from Her Majesty's dominions for five years. He found himself in Montana and reintegrated himself with the Métis down south. While in exile, he became an American citizen and married Marguerite Monet de Bellemer. They had three children together. Now we're going to dive into the Northwest Resistance and the Battle of Batoche. Many indigenous groups were suffering due to low bison population. Their land was being signed away through treaties, and towns, farmland, and railroads were pushing them out. The Métis were experiencing low crop harvests, and the fur trade was slowing to a crawl. A man named Gabriel Dumas was especially dissatisfied with Canada's lack of action and reached out to Louis Riel in hopes of him aiding them with his past experience negotiating with Canada. Riel agreed under the terms of bringing his family to him with Batoche, as well as being able to return to Montana once negotiations were complete. History repeats itself and the provisional government of Saskatchewan is formed with Louis Riel as president, and they tried to negotiate with Canada. They were ignored and the Métis organized the 300-men battalion and moved to seize the Hudson's Bay Post in Fort Carleton. The Métis' first battle in the Northwest Resistance is known as the Battle of Duck Lake. A large group of Métis and First Nations faced the force of the Northwest Mounted Police. The Métis and First Nations won and returned to Batoche. With the loss at Duck Lake, the Canadian government formed a militia to deal with Louis Riel and the Métis once and for all. The plan was simple, march all the Canadian troops to Batoche. Louis Riel caught word of the Canadians' plans and sought to focus all of his men in defending Batoche. Gabriel Dumas had a different idea, cut them off with a surprise attack. 
Dumas won the argument and the Métis force moved to confront the Canadians. This fight is known as the Battle of Fish Creek. The Canadians tried to fight off the Métis resistors but suffered heavy casualties and retreated. Now begins the Battle of Batoche and, spoiler alert, it doesn't end well for the Métis. On May 9th, the Canadian general, Frederick Middleton, commanded his forces to attack the southern end of Batoche. Day after day, Middleton would attack and retreat, attack and retreat. On May 12th, the Métis were overrun, largely due to being short on ammunition. Louis Riel surrendered on May 15th. Riel was formally charged with treason and his trial began in Regina. Riel's lawyer was trying to excuse Riel on the grounds of insanity due to a time he spent in asylum in 1876. Riel didn't want to be excused because of insanity as he believed it would discredit the Métis and their mistreatment by the Canadian government. After un undergoing a psych evaluation, Riel was deemed sane and was later charged guilty and the jury recommended clemency, but it was overruled in favor of execution. So that's it, isn't it? Riel's wife Marguerite moved to live with Riel's family and later died of tuberculosis. Their three children all passed before being able to have kids of their own. His legacy is over. But remember, Riel was the eldest of 11 siblings who were able to have children of their own. Marguerite also had siblings who had their kids. That's not to say his legacy only lives through his family. Every Métis person carries his legacy. We look upon him with gratitude and he helped solidify the Métis as people, not just half-breeds. He saved lives and defended the ones that didn't have a voice. And that's why he's a hero. Wow, that was so cool. There's so much to learn. And if you're really captivated and interested, there's actually a lot of books about Louis Riel and Métis culture. And guess what? The McMurray Métis are building a world-class Métis cultural center right here in Fort McMurray on McDonald Island. So be sure to save your bookmarks because we're hoping to open the cultural center in December 2023. And there'll be a resource library. Maybe the newly elected president of the Métis National Council will come up for the grand opening. Cassidy Karen became the first woman to take the role as president of the Métis National Council. So it really is history in the making. Say hello, my name is Cassidy Karen, president of the Métis National Council. I'm sending you this video today from unceded Algonquin territory in Ottawa, Ontario. I am so grateful to these lands and to the nations of this territory who have looked after these lands long before Ottawa was Ottawa. Happy Louis Riel Day! Louis Riel was a great Métis leader who did so much for us as Métis people and the Métis nation, which is why we honour and celebrate him. But Louis Riel was also a very important individual in making Canada what it is today, which is why it's important that we share stories of Louis Riel with all Canadians and encourage you to continue exploring all that our Métis people did to contribute to this country. I take a lot of inspiration from Louis Riel. Did you know that in my community, I'm still considered a youth, but I'm not the first youth president. Louis Riel was only 25 when he became the president of the Métis Provisional Government. I know that you students are learning a lot about Louis Riel and the Métis today from my friends at McMurray Métis. You might be starting to learn that our history dates back many generations when Métis people led by Louis Riel, fought to protect our inherent rights. Today, we're still fighting these battles, though now we do our fighting in the courts to continue working on securing our rights. I know that all of this can seem a little bit intimidating, but we look to our past history and the stories of important Métis people like Louis Riel, who tirelessly fought for the Métis nation and can draw from his strength courage and determination, our own passions, and do some good in this world. On behalf of the Métis National Council, I want to thank you for all listening to the McMurray Métis today and celebrating with them. Happy Louis Riel Day, Fort McMurray. I hope you all enjoyed learning about the life and times of Louis Riel. 
Now it's time to get out your pencils and show us what you've learned. Trading is another part of our history and culture. Today, we shared with you some of our traditional knowledge. Now we want you to share with us through art. Louis Riel said, my people will sleep for 100 years, but when they awake, it will be the artists who give them their spirit back. We are asking you to design a comic strip based on our superhero, Louis Riel. Create, draw, and color the eight boxes showing the life and times of Louis Riel. Be creative and have fun designing your comic strip. One winner from each class will be drawn between next week and we will let your teachers know who the winner is and who gets an extra prize from the McMurray Métis. Good luck. And if you need more inspiration or want to stay in touch, please follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and even TikTok. Our username is at McMurray Métis. And we will even be posting this video if you want to share it with your friends and family. On behalf of McMurray Métis, I want to say Kenna Skolmton. Thank you all for learning more about Louis Riel and Métis culture. Happy Métis Week!